sweet comic valentine you make me smile with my heart your looks are Yet you're my favorite work of art. Is your figure less than Greek? Is your mouth a little weak? When you open it to speak, you smart Don't change your hair for me Not if you care for me Stay little Valentine Each day is Valentine's Is your figure less than Greek? Is your mouth a little weak? When you open it to speak, are you smart? is Valentine's Day. Two bright side lights winking and blinking.
McFarland to it. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming out tonight. Last week we did Gershwin and tonight it's Richard Rogers and next week it's going to be Leonard Bernstein. Next week, this week I should say, this Thursday. I can always count on this crowd to correct me when I make a mistake. I've learned that. I know all you guys. Thank you. This Thursday. Just let me not forget. <clears throat> Thanks again to the JCC, Jackie Gamash, the underwriters for making all of this possible, and once again for trusting an unknown guy to put on a show like this. Thank you so much. Who was Richard Rogers? Well, he wrote some orchestral music for some TV shows. I bet nobody in the, in the room remembers a single one of those. He wrote some orchestral music for other venues. He wrote a handful of just plain popular songs. But apart from that, he was the composer of popular songs for stage shows, musicals, to the extent that there's a difference, and of course, movies. The vast, vast bulk of what he wrote was just that. And we've heard his music. It's been used in movies even where he wasn't the featured composer, as you know. And as with Gershwin, he wrote uh, music that has been performed as popular songs by all manner of singers from popular to crooners to lounge singers to folk singers, you name it. And his music has been performed by singers who are specifically 
jazz singers like our singer this evening. Think of some of the classic performances that we know, for example, of My Funny Valentine, Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald, Chet Baker, many others. And his music has been performed countless times by jazz instrumentalists, where it's often been transformed into versions that we scarcely recognize. Think again, for example, of the very, very famous John Coltrane performance of My Favorite Things back in 1960. Hardly captures the flavor of the original song in the musical. It's completely transformed. Alec Wilder is, was the great historian of American popular song of all kinds. He wrote a book about American popular songs. It's just a list of them with his comments. He liked them, he didn't like them. But he makes an interesting comment about Rogers, which was that he felt that if he had never heard of this man before and had never heard any of the music, and somebody were to come along and play a whole bunch of it mixed in with some other music, he'd probably never be able to tell which was by the mystery composer, Richard Rogers and which was by somebody else. And as we'll hear tonight with the varying styles, that's definitely true. Some of the music is interestingly complex and some of it is also interestingly enormously simple from a musical and harmonic point of view. So for example, did you know that Richard Rogers wrote this piece, which I'm sure you'll recognize. vehicle for this wonderful song by Rogers is a scene at the beginning. You see Chevalier is playing a tailor, and it's Paris, and he has just finished sewing a bridegroom's suit for a rather corpulent and not very attractive to be bridegroom, who is absolutely delighted with what uh, his tailor has made for him. And Chevalier, the character, is so moved by the scene that he can't help bursting into song, of course, with his thick French accent. And uh, he wasn't a very good singer either, or maybe he just pretended not to be. But everybody recognizes the tune that he sings. <laughs> Thank you. 
rather unlikely kind of scene, but that music, I mean, is just amazing. And where does it come from? Relatively simple harmonies. There's no blues in it at all. Doesn't really even sound that much like Gershwin. The harmonies are a little bit richer than what you'd find, say, in Mozart, but um, just the way he puts them together, and it perfectly matches the mood, and it perfectly matches the words. Mitzi Green, at the age of, I think, 16, playing a character named Billy Smith, sings this song to Val, renamed Valentine because of the song, Lamar, that's the character, played by an almost equally young Ray Heatherton. And I have to confess that it was embarrassingly recent that I learned that this song is meant to be sung by a woman to a man. I always assumed that a man sang it to a woman. And it used to kind of give me the creeps, the words. I remember my daughter, when she was very young, said, Dad, you know, that's a mean song. Listen to what the person says. Um, you're looks are laughable, unphotographical. Your figure is less than Greek. Your mouth is a little weak. When you open it to speak, are you smart? But it turns out that it's sung by a woman to a man. And I guess I'm such a sexist patriarch that I think that's totally acceptable. It kind of makes <laughs> sense that way. Sure, she's being affectionate. But I wanted to point out something about this, even though we have already performed it. Um, I think this is one of the best songs ever. I, no, I think this is one of the best things that ever happened in the history of the universe, this, this song. I think it's an absolute work of genius. And I wanted to call your attention to some of its musical features, because I think what is so ingenious about it is first, how did he ever come up with this idea? Who could come up with those harmonies? Even if you had the text to work with, or you were going to have the text to work with, whatever it was going to be, who would come up with those harmonic and melodic ideas? But here it seems to me that the trick to it, just to reduce it to simplicity, which it doesn't deserve, is the way it goes back and forth between minor and major. And let me illustrate that for you and then explain maybe why I think he did it. I don't think he ever said why he did it, why it makes sense that he did do it. But it starts out in the minor key. like it's back in major, but no. Back into minor. Sounds as if it's going into major. Back in minor. didn't begin in a major key. Why does it make sense? Well, everything about the lyrics is paradoxical. My funny Valentine, sweet comic Valentine, you make me smile. 
with my heart. You know, your looks are laughable, unphotographable, and yet you're my favorite work of art. And now here, it switches into major. Is your figure less than Greek? Is your mouth a little weak? When you open it to speak, are you smart? That's a rhetorical question. Sounds like the answer is maybe not so much. And then back briefly to minor. Don't change a hair for me. Not if you care for me. And as it moves into major to finish on that glorious major final chord where it didn't begin, stay, little Valentine, stay. Each day is Valentine's Day. It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, the music is brilliant um, without the words, but once you put the words together, it seems to me that this is the perfect marriage. That's what Rogers was just so good at doing. Thank you.